Well, one of the great South African writers, Olive Schreiner, tells an incredible story about locusts. As she observed locusts going to the river, the first locust goes and is swept away by the current. Another comes and makes a track to the river's edge and is swept away by the current and is heard of no more. But eventually, the insects come together and build upon each other and build a bridge to the other side. But Olive Schreiner makes a statement. She says, but what of those who came first and were swept away by the current and left on the cutting room floor of history? They made a track to the river's edge so someone else would have the possibility of making it to the other side. They made a track to the river's edge and made a way for someone else. There are always people in our lives and in history who make a track to the river's edge and make it possible for us to live. We love to lift up those celebrated people in history and we leave so many people on the cutting room floor. One such person, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., we love to celebrate. He is without a doubt one of the greatest prophets of the 20th century in America, America has ever produced. But what of the person who made a track to the river's edge for Dr. King? A gentleman by the name of Reverend Vernon Johns. He pastored the Dexter Avenue Baptist Church before Dr. King. He was a powerful preacher. And he would preach sermons such as, for example, on the marquee, he would place the word, is heaven segregated? Or another message was, is it legal to lynch Negroes in Alabama? His preaching was so powerful that the police every Saturday night would come by to see just what he was preaching on Sunday. You have to be a major preacher in order for the police to come out to your church every Saturday night just to see what you were preaching. And when we look at the Gospel of Mark and this person by the name of John, John the Baptist, John the Baptizer, when we know that John the Baptizer, his job specifically was to make a way for someone else. And when we recognize that John's job was to make a way for someone else, we see that it was not about him, but it was all about Jesus. He was not concerned about his ego. He had a ministry in the desert, in a place of low resources, and people from the city and from the country would come and hear John. He was concerned about the poor, those who were brokenhearted, and many people may not lift up his name, but he was concerned about influencing the next generation. And as a country, as we reflect upon Haiti and watch with horror, they are in their desert moment. But we, as Americans, we owe a debt to Haiti. Why would I say we owe a debt to Haiti? Because it was in 1796, Toussaint L'Ouverture. He led a revolution that freed Haiti. And Napoleon even sent troops to Haiti to crush the revolt. But they could not handle those people in Haiti. And Haiti became a free country. And as a result, it ended up influencing the abolitionist movement in America. Frederick Douglass, who was the ambassador to Haiti in 1886, stated, until she spoke, no one knew of a Christian nation in the West that would abolish slavery until she spoke. We did not understand that there was a connection between our Christianity and the idea of liberation until she spoke. Frederick Douglass said that he would not be able to stand before Abraham Lincoln and say, sign the Emancipation Proclamation until Haiti spoke. Haiti is in its desert moment, and it is our job to recognize they made a way for the abolitionist movement today. We are all here as a result of someone else. My name is Otis Moss III. My father's name is Otis Moss Jr. I am the product of someone who made a way for me, and someone made a way for my father, Otis Moss Jr. It was Otis Moss Sr. And before Otis Moss Sr., someone made a way for him, Benjamin Elijah Mays. And before Benjamin Elijah Mays, there was John Hope. And before John Hope, there was W.E.B. Du Bois. Before Du Bois, there was Frederick Douglass. And before Frederick Douglass, there was Richard Allen. Before Richard Allen, before Richard Allen, there was George Lyle. Before George Lyle, there was Roger Williams. And before Roger Williams, there was John Wesley. And before John Wesley, there was an Anabaptist movement. Before the Anabaptist movement, there was John Calvin. And before John Calvin, there was Martin Luther. And before Martin Luther, there was St. Thomas Aquinas. And before St. Thomas Aquinas, there was an Augustine. And before an Augustine, there was a Tertullian. Before Tertullian, there was a Cyprian. Before Cyprian, there was a Paul. Before Paul, there was a Peter. Before Peter, there was a Jesus. Before Jesus, there was a John. Before John, there was an Isaiah. Before Isaiah, there was a Solomon. Before Solomon, uh, there was a David. Before David, there was a Saul. Before Saul, there was a Samuel. And before Samuel, uh, there was a Samson. Before Samson, there was a Deborah. Before Deborah, there was a Joshua. Before Joshua, there was a Moses. Before Moses, there was a Joseph. Before Joseph, there was an Isaac. Before Isaac, there was an Abraham. Before Abraham,
Abraham, uh, there was a Noah. Before Noah, there was a Cain and Abel. Before there was a Cain and Abel, there was an Adam and Eve. And before Adam and Eve, there was God. In the beginning was God, and the Word was with God. There is always someone who is before us, who makes a way for us. And we give God thanks for the possibility that people have been in our lives, some that we remember, some that we do not remember, who make a way for us. And I simply say this as, as I close. We are all called to make a way for someone else. I heard an interesting story by a particular NFL uh, superstar uh, who was being interviewed by ESPN. And the reporter was saying that, you know what? I have problems with the way that you enter into the end zone. You're always pointing your finger and then pointing up and pointing your finger. You have unsportsmanlike conduct. Well, this particular NFL star said back to the reporter, obviously, you've never played football because you think that it's all about me. What I am doing is I am turning around, looking back to see where I have come from. And I recognize the only way that I've made it into the end zone is because people blocked for me. They took the hit from me. They took hurts and bruises from me. And so when you see me doing this, I'm saying thank you to my guard and thank you to my tackle. But after I finish thanking my guard and my tackle, there's one other person I have to thank that made it possible for me to be, the, be here, and that being God. And so I lift my finger up and say, thank you, God, because you blocked for me. And in my tradition, I would say that there's someone else who blocked for us, who was bruised for our transgressions and was hurt so that we would be where we are today. He was bruised at Calvary so that we would be set free. He made a way for us, and his name is Jesus. We are all called to make a way. Thank you.